Hi guys. I'm really glad that we have gathered today. Sure, it will be a very intensive three hours filled with ideas, insight, um, practical tools. We brought from SHRIM 2023 from Las Vegas. My name is Katerina Kowalewska and I'm a head of HR Pro, official representative of SHRIM in Eastern Europe and head of supervisory board. Next slide, please. So as Ukrainian Association of HR Professionals, HR Pro is created to enhance the value and competitiveness of HR professionals in the field. And today I will talk primarily about our uh, relationship with SHRM. And as you can see, as normal HR association, we are doing a lot of activities. But the, this time it, we visited and HR Pro delegation visited the biggest conference for HR specialists on the planet. And it wasn't just the biggest HR conference on the planet. It was an anniversary one. 75 years SHRIM helps HR specialists become stronger, more efficient, more confident. Um, a couple of words about our relationship with the SHRIM, SHRM. It's uh, nine years of partnership. Uh, eight years we are we bring our delegation to the conference. It's more than 90 SHRIM certified HR professionals prepared by us. And a uh, couple of words, who is the SHRM? It's the biggest, as I said, HR association in the world. As you can see the numbers, it's really impressive. 300,000 community members, more than 100,000 SHRIM certified professionals all over the world. And as you can see, SHRIM represented in many, many countries all over the world. Um, what, what else? Uh, we have amazing speakers today, and I don't want to um, take the part of their work <laughs> so they will share their experience, uh, their view of this conference, their ideas they brought from this amazing huge event. Next slide, please. So SHRIM 2023, uh, it's a really huge event. 22,000 people was just offline. It's as usually four days on of intensive work. It's more than 300 sessions, more than 320 speakers and huge, I can say, uh, exhibition. More than 500 vendors was there this year. And um, I'm really proud that our uh, relations with SHRIM started already nine years ago and I'm pleased to present the most modern tools for HR development here in Eastern Europe. Uh, the main three pillows for me, um, the main three ideas which I can see at SHRIM conference 2023 was diversity adaptability and technology. So let's dive into modern trends and cutting edge technologies with our great speakers. Our next slide, please. First of all, uh, I need to invite you to join us and see and join us at Facebook, at LinkedIn and really uh, become a part of a great community. Develop yourself and become stronger. Next slide. What's going on? I mean, what is going on today? So 
Um, James Baker will tell you more about shrimp. Um, Zahid will tell you more about uh, HR analytics and diversity actually, and how to be more sustainable, even in HR sphere. Uh, Ludmila Garava will tell you more about the HR role uh, and how it's transform transforming. And we really hear a lot about the strategic leadership role, but how to be more strategic, what exactly we need to do to be more strategic. It's what we will discuss with her. Next, please. Uh, Irina Brzak will tell us more about talent story shortage and payment and is, if if it's the main uh, problem, uh, should we pay more or should we pay more attention to other questions as well? And I really hope that Ira will have time to share her, her impression from uh, president's speech, ex-president's speech. Bill Clinton was uh, one of the main uh, speaker at this conference, and I, I really hope, Ira, you will tell us your impression about his speech as well. And technology, Karine Papikian and Evgen Dilabrov will cover this part of the topic. I mean, just we are becoming more and more technology driven function so let's go and see what's what's new here so uh, i would like to invite james baker global business partner of shrim so james i hope i didn't take the big part of your presentation and please tell us more about shrim about products and thank you for being here today you're welcome and thank you very much for having me. And good afternoon to everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure to be with you today. In fact, I would say it's a privilege to be with you. The The highlight of, of my job every day is working with our partners and talking to people all around the world. And it's these type of events and Sherm 23 as well that really get me most excited. Um, just a, a little bit about me. Um, my name is James Baker. I've been with Sherm for six years. I'm the Sherm Global Business Partner, which what that means essentially is I support markets outside of the United States. I specifically support Europe, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Americas, which includes South America and the Caribbean. And we support, um, or my, my role in supporting folks is to both support partners who then support all of our members and then support individual business clients on a B2B level. Um, today, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about SHRM. I think a lot of people on this call, if not everyone, probably knows who we are. But I did want to give an overview because if you're talking about a conference, you should maybe know a little bit about the organization behind the conference and also what else we can do for you as you develop your HR career. So for an agenda today, we'll talk a little bit about SHRM, about membership, our education offerings, and then we'll finish with the events and, and a Q&A. Okay, so who is SHRM? As Katya said, we are the largest HR association in the world. Right now we have over 325,000 members. That's a record. So we're really proud of that. Coming up on 75 years, we hit that 325,000 uh, member mark. Um, we like to call ourselves the voice of all things work, worker, and the workplace. So for, the long, for a long time, we've focused on supporting HR and HR practitioners. But what we realize is HR is really the backbone of a company. And from there, you, you can spread out into the, the workers and the workplace. Um, our mission, vision, and, and purpose are pretty simple. Our purpose is to elevate the HR profession. That's to take it as high as we can, make it as strategic as we can. Our mission is to empower people and workplaces by advancing HR practices and maximizing human potential. And that maximizing human potential piece is becoming more and more important with time. Um, and our vision is to build a world of work that works for all. I know that's a really large kind of lofty vision, but we really believe, look, you spend 40, sometimes 50, even more hours a week 
every single week at your job, right? And your experience at work, you take that with you. You take it home to your family. You take it to your friends. You know, you you dream about it. <laughs> so the the point is that the better the workplace is for people and the better their work experience is, we believe that that will lead to just a better global situation altogether. Um, as an organization, we have seven offices around the world. Our headquarters are in Alexandria, Virginia. We also have a small office in DC, an office in California. We have an office in Dubai and then three offices in India. So from, from a reach standpoint, wherever you live, um, we're not too far away. Um, Let's talk a little bit about membership and why people get involved with SHRM to be to begin with. There are many, many ways to get involved with SHRM, but kind of the very first part is is membership. Um, our membership is really designed to. Keep you up to date so that you can be the best in your job. Um, there are three ways you can engage with SHRM. Typically you can read or listen. So this is articles, podcasts, webinars, things like that. You can watch, so this would be live events, webinars, and then interact with others. As we mentioned, 325,000 people, and these folks are all around the world. So if you can't learn from SHRM, you can certainly learn from all of your peers within the member group. Um, to highlight a few member benefits that are, that are really popular, um, we have a podcast, All Things Work. I encourage you to check this out. This is um, one of the most popular workplace podcasts and we cover a very large range of topics and we get quite a good speaker lineup. Um, webcasts and, and webinars. So we do over 200 webinars a year. Here are just three examples on the slide, but the idea here is that no matter what part of HR you're interested in, we have a webinar for you. And even if you're outside of HR, if you're people management, Right, or maybe you're an entrepreneur and you have to hire people. Your business is growing. You're in a startup, right? We're, these webinars are designed to kind of keep you up to date. And in fact, um, one utility that people really found with the webinar was during COVID, we partnered with the Centers for Disease Control to give regular updates to employers and HR professionals on how they should manage COVID in the workplace. This is just one example, but we're always running webinars, so definitely encourage you to check those out. We also offer turnkey tools and templates. We have hundreds of these, and the idea is to make your job as an HR practitioner easier, right? You don't have to invent everything from the ground up. If you need to know how much to pay someone, use the salary benchmarking tool, right? Um, if you wanna know how much a new employee will cost you, use the employee cost calculator. It saves you a ton of time, makes you more strategic, and helps you get things done a lot easier. Uh, we follow trends and we try to keep you up to date. A couple that I chose to highlight for this one um, is the great compromise. So we, we left the office during COVID and now people are returning to work, but there's a pretty big disagreement between what employers want and what business owners want versus what employees want. So we're doing a big expose on that, right? We're a series of articles to kind of dive into that topic specifically. Um, also, chat GPT and AI, right? This is the kind of talk of the town right now. We have a web page specifically dedicated to chat GPT and AI in the workplace. How does this affect you as an HR practitioner? How does it affect you as, as, as a business owner? And what's coming down the pike? Um, so far, as of yesterday, we had 95 articles and research points specifically around AI in the workplace. So. Definitely, definitely worth becoming a member just to check that out and follow the conversation. Speaking of HR trends, if you'd like to talk to someone about these trends, whether they're seasonal, they're big picture, um, or if you just have basic questions, we have a knowledge advisor team that when you become a member, you can call in, ask them questions, and they can give you guidance on the best way to solve your situation. Um, they can talk from experience. They all have 25 plus years in, in HR. They're all SHRM certified, and they have access to all of the, the resources that SHRM members have access to, and they'll also go outside of the organization. So if SHRM doesn't have the information you're looking for, they will still help you find it. 
Um, this is just a 2022 recap of the, the different topics that people called in about, but you can see a lot of requests every single day, hundreds of people calling in, right? Almost 53,000 requests in 2022. Benefits, employee relations, compensation being the top three topics. Okay, let's change gears here. So how can you use SHRM to advance your career? Well, SHRM has a number of educational offerings that are specifically designed to make you the best HR practitioner you can be. Whether you're at the beginning of your career, you know, or you're even still in school or university, all the way up to the point where you become a CHRO, we have educational offerings that, that are quite compelling and will help you do your job better. Um, the flagship offering, which I think everybody's probably heard of and, and HR Pro offers regular courses on, is the, the SHRM certification. And there are two levels of certification. There's the SHRM CP, Certified Professional, and this is designed for early career to mid-career practitioners, um, people who are responsible for the day-to-day -day business within the HR department. And then there's the SHRM SCP, Senior Certified Professional, and this is for senior level HR people. You can think of this as CHROs, VPs of HR, but folks who are responsible for the people policy within the organization. It's a very kind of the strategy side of things. Um, you know, this is a global, a global certification out of the box. It's designed specifically to be applicable to you and your career, no matter where you are. It's based on a, a, a competency model that covers all of the core elements and, and areas uh, where you need to excel to, to be very good in HR. So I encourage you to check it out. There are benefits to the individual and there are benefits to the organization. We have over 100,000 people certified so far, and that number continues to climb. If you are interested in a specific area of HR, you think of certification as broad knowledge. Um, if you're interested in a specific area of HR, I would encourage you to look at our, our SHRM specialty credentials. Um, Talent acquisition and people analytics are the most popular where you can specialize in those kind of subfields, um, but also work uh, inclusive workplace culture. This one is gaining a lot of popularity as well. One more that I would call out HR department of one. If you work for a startup or a small business or you are an entrepreneur, you're making your first hires, you want to know how, how that works, um, the HR department of one specialty credential will, will get you up to speed. Um, finally, the other educational offering that I wanted to call out was, was our newest one, which is the SHRM People Manager Qualification. As SHRM thinks about its mission to support work workers and the workplace, what we realized was that people management plays a very large role in company culture, and all of that affects your people policy. We've done a number of studies where we had some pretty interesting findings. You know, one out of three workers say their manager cannot lead a team. If you're a business owner and one out of three workers say your their manager is is not good, that's a problem for you. We also know that 60% of workers they leave because of their manager. They like their job, they like the company, they like the mission, but they don't like who they report to. And then the one that I think everyone on this call will probably relate to is we found that 28% of an HR professional's time is spent solving problems that are caused by bad people managers. So when we think about elevating HR and making HR more strategic, making you more strategic and more successful in your job, one thing we can do is make people managers better. So this program is designed to cover the basics of people management, communication, and then also managing performance. So all of those, those, the roles that people managers play in the HR process, hiring, firing, performance reviews, compensation discussion, it's all taught in this program. So if you're looking to become a manager or you're already a manager or you have a team of managers, um, definitely encourage you to take a look at PMQ. Okay, finally, and the reason we're really here for SHRM events. I did want to highlight that SHRM, you know, we have 11 events around the world every single year. Um, today we're discussing annual conference, but if annual conference seems like, you know, if, uh, 
If the United States seems like it's far away or you'd like to check out a different region of the world, we do have conferences all around the world. We'll have an annual conference in Dubai in November. We have a number of events in India as well. If you're interested in specific subsects, we have a conference dedicated to talent, talent acquisition, retention, everything talent, and then also inclusion, which is our DEI conference. Um, but the SHRM annual conference. So the SHRM annual conference, as Katya mentioned, it's, it's the largest HR gathering in the world. It's really incredible. The, the energy is unbelievable. It's super motivating. Um, and when you go there, you really, really feel like you're part of a community. Um, everybody knows that there's a, there's a global HR community. Um, and it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to see it. It's, it's truly incredible. So this year, we were celebrating our 75th anniversary. And we decided that we needed to do something special as a result of it. So we made it the biggest conference we possibly could. We had 25,000 plus HR leaders, professionals, and industry experts on site. And that, that doesn't include the number of people who joined us virtually. So it was an incredible gathering, really, really large. 300 plus concurrent sessions um, and speakers, keynotes and mega sessions. Um, this is an order of magnitude larger than we normally go. Um, so that, that was really great. 200 plus exhibitors. Katya said, I think around 500. I think her number is probably more accurate than mine. Um, but the Expo Hall is, is a really great place to go. It's a fun place to be, tons of energy. And if you're out shopping around for HR solutions or you're looking for inspiration, things that you can take back um, in terms of products or platforms, software, things like that, um, the, ex the Expo Hall is a, is a great place to be. 12 learning tracks covering the kind of the basics of HR th all the way through technology and leadership and management. Um, no matter what your where you are in your career, what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish, lots of learning tracks. Four days of learning and networking. And I really do want to call out this networking piece, right? Um, one of the great values of an event like this is meeting people from around the world and talking to them, getting different perspectives, um, growing your network, right? If you're if you're in the middle of your management structure and you want to get to the top, start networking with VPs, CHROs, etc. They're all there. Um, Places to network, we have on-site lounges. So we have the Global Lounge and the Enterprise Lounge. And global Lounge is for folks who are interested in global HR and have that global perspective. Also, if you've, you've traveled a long way, maybe you want to put your feet up, grab a cup of coffee, charge your laptop or your cell phone. Um, that's the place to do it. And the Enterprise Lounge is specifically designed for businesses. So you can go in, you can meet people from other companies, folks in your industry, talk about solutions, brainstorm ideas, really great. Um, we also have after hours receptions, two in particular that I'll call out, our enterprise reception, which is designed for anyone who works for large businesses. But if you come with a, a delegation, you also have a ticket to that. But that is a really, really fun reception. This year we had close to 4,000 people. It was at a nightclub. We took over the whole nightclub, James Bond themed, very fun, very fun. If you're certified, and I hope you get certified, but if you're certified, then we have the certification reception where you can go and you can meet all the certified people at conference. You can talk about what certification has done for them, what it's done for you, you know, strategically plan around your certification, but most importantly, just celebrate the fact that you're certified. That is a, an incredible accomplishment. And, and finally, um, some kind of high level um, insights or, or um, you know, a recap is uh, we, we bring in the, the world class entertainment. And this is something that we are super, super proud of. People work very hard. They travel a long distance to come to conference. So we, in addition to learning, we want them to have a lot of fun. This year we had Janet Jackson, um, which I think is no stranger to anyone on this call. And it was an incredible show, honestly. Anyone who was there would would think that it, they went to a, a Janet Jackson concert. Um, and she brought her, her entire tour with her and put on a great show for a much smaller audience than normal, right? Um, 
normally she's putting 50, 60, 100,000 people in a stadium. And so this was a really smaller, intimate performance where you could get up close with Janet Jackson and and you know, celebrate celebrate um, you know your successes over the past few years. So this is just a high level recap. Um, I definitely encourage you come join us in Chicago June 23rd through 26th uh, for Sherm 24. We're going to do the same thing. It's going to be large. It's going to be impactful, motivating, fun, exciting. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, as usual, HR Pro will be leading a delegation. So join Katya. She always shows her folks a good time. I know this because I hang out with them. And so I'll see you at conference as well. But um, yeah, so I will pause there and say thank you very much for, for allowing me to be with you today. It's it's a privilege. And Katya, if we have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, James. Yeah, you really remind me the whole the whole story about this conference. Yeah, it was really amazing and concert was really, really nice. And I agree with you that it was some intimacy in this because we really clearly understand that it's the smallest group she was thinking for the last years, I think so. Uh, we have one question. How does shrimp certification enhance career development? That, that is a great question. So first of all, um, you learn a lot when you when you study to get certified. So um, your your confidence in yourself grows significantly, and I don't think that should be understated. When you feel confident in what you know, you become a better employee, you become more assertive, your boss trusts you more. Um, so that that's one. Another, it signals to your current employer that you've you've achieved a level of expertise and mastery in HR. You will be considered more often for promotions. Um, you might be given stretch assignments that lead to to career development. Also, if you're looking to transition out of your current employer, and you know sometimes you have to leave to go up, right? So when you're when you're applying for jobs. Um, there's no better way to signal your expertise in HR to a fellow HR per professional than to show them that you've achieved certification. Um, so I, I think those are probably the main points, but you know, we do have, if anyone's interested in, in specifics around that, we have a ton of data on this, right? How people have used certification to advance their career. What sort of, um, raise they've gotten. Most people who get certified receive within the first year a 10 to 15 percent salary increase. I mean that's significant. So even if your if your position doesn't change immediately, uh, there are other um, other other ways that you benefit. And I think the final piece I'd say is you know there are 100,000 people who are certified and anyone who's gone through that knows that it's it's not an easy thing to do whether it's CP or SCP, both are challenging and both will will ask you to think very critically about your job. Um, but then you're part of a network, right? We talked about the network effects of Sherm and using and leveraging that. So, um, you know, you will you'll gain access to that pool of people and those fellow certified people can help elevate your career. Perfect. Thank you very much. I completely agree with you. And the point to increase your confidence, I think it's really the first one and very important because we are in a field where the confidence is something really needed. And I have my question for you. What is your favorite part of this biggest conference? Ooh. I know that the quick answer should be Janet Jackson, but I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> that uh, honestly, my favorite part of the conference is just is the community, right? I mean, there's great learning and there there are really fun events, but for me, the, the best part is is just plugging into the community. I've I've been to conference five times now and I see the same people over and over and it's almost at this. It's like a family reunion, right? And every year you add more people to your network and you have an even better time. You get dinner or lunch with new people. Um, for me, that that's the the absolute highlight. Um, I would also as a close second, right? The keynotes are always 
very interesting, right? We had Bill Clinton this year as a keynote. Um, even if you're not an American or you don't like politics, you know, Bill Clinton was was a leader of the in the White House for eight years. So his leadership principles, his management principles, right? You can take those back. Um, so number one is community and, and number two is is learning from the professionals. And Janet gets number three, I think, but she was still fun. So thank you. Thank you very much, James. Thank you for your support and for being with us today. Uh, we have some small changes in our uh, schedule and I would like to invite Irina Brzak, Shrimp CP, People and Culture Director of Marca Netherlands to join us and to share your experience with us. And I'm glad that uh, James started a little bit about uh, Bill Clinton because I still want you to share some of your impression about he, his speech. And I mean, I, am, I know that you're going to talk about serious HR things, but uh, Bill Clinton was interesting person to see and to listen. So please don't forget to share it with us. Irina, please. We can't hear you. Please unmute yourself. OK. Oh. Hi, Perfect. everyone. Do you see the presentation? Yes, we can see. Somehow doesn't change on slide mode or on the presentation, but uh, I will start anyway. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, it's been a pleasure to share my things and my thoughts through the conference. I can only relate to what James was told uh, before. That is the biggest conference. Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of people, a lot of people you can learn from, and that and that's exactly about the uh, the conference. And it's really enhancing your overall perception of what HR professional are doing across the world. And you can relate. Uh, relate to many things despite of the things that you are listening and navigating your personal uh, conference journey through American based speakers mostly and many practices are coming from the United States perspective but there are so many repetitions that you can really find and see um, on the European markets as well and and that's exactly uh, enhancing what how you can you can look a little bit from the different perspective so today i will share my my thoughts and my observations from the conference and i was thinking we we were talking a lot during the conference uh the highlights of what we were discussing was everything about the well-being and engagement we were discussing around a lot of topics around great resignations and the skills gap and the labor shortages and and it's really went through like a highlight through many presentations uh, across the all four days and uh, we all facing labor shortage we're all facing skill gap but what has really hit us all is really the great resignation. We are feeling that people are really leaving us, leaving companies. They change the job very fast. Um, they're not really loyal as we used to, to do. And whenever you are touching the topic of the retention and the resignation, every time it's come up the, the topic about the money. And that's also one of the interesting things are uh, the money it's a major reason well why people leave are we still trying to fix money or we really need to look a little bit different for the resignation and retention topic and uh i wanted to share what i saw in one of the uh, couple of the it's a combination of different uh, of different um um presentations from different people but i really think that the researches are very interesting that i wanted to present there are three researches that were shared from pew research from the shrimp research and from mit research and uh we started about the great resignations because we see that the voluntary fluctuation is increasing across uh, uh across the companies 
Um, of course, there are kind of number of deaths across United States and because of the COVID, and I think it's impacted not only United States, but Europe also, the government and companies allowed many people who are asking for the early retirement and um, they were granted that. We also face the birth rate declining trends. Um, we all, the observation around that the young workers are really less loyal than the more elderly one. Uh, the confidence in the leadership is really dropping down. There is a perception and something is in there that the workplace is really not evolving. Uh, the way how the employees perceived and ready to be loyal for the organization is also dropping and organizations spend a lot of money to train people to give some career opportunities, everything, but it's not seems not really working out because at the end of the day, approximately 20 percent is highly engaged and 13 percent are fully satisfied with the work experience and that's that's a little bit um, frightened, yes, isn't it? And uh, when to talk about the three resignation surveys, I found the outcomes of that surveys very interesting, and I hope you too as well. So in the Pew research, when we are going for the outcomes, and uh, here, Irina, can I please, sorry for interrupting you, uh, can you please check because we can't see the presentation, we can see the just the main slide right now. Okay, let me do it once again because. Yeah, because I'm sure you, I know the, your slides and I would like people to see your presentation. Let me try once again. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me share the screen then. Do you see now? Yeah, right now it's working. I just the, on the fourth, I mean, just, yeah. At but least there is uh, resignation research outcomes. This yeah. slide, yeah. yeah. Can you just make it the full screen? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. Something wrong with my computer. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, let me let me do as it is. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, but yeah, so the three resignation research is outcomes, which a Pew Research Center, uh, it was run with the employees. SHREAM research was run with the HR professionals and MIT research was run also with the employees. So what we see in the Pew Research, that top three reasons, it's all about, yes, the number one is pay, that pay is too low, but number two, it's opportunities for for an advancement, and number three is a felt disrespect of work. Yeah, so, and to combine those, we might probably think about is the pay is the main reason? It might probably be, but that is like top three in the peer research. When asking the HR professionals why people, and we, uh, uh, why people are leaving the organizations. So HR professionals also say, were saying about the inadequate total compensation, but they also were highlighting the lack of career development, lack of workplace flexibility, unsustainable work expectations, and uncaring and uninspiring leaders. And out of three, I like the most, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Research. Why? Because they ask employees what are their major reasons for leaving, but they also weighted the answers trying to understand what is the real reason. And if you see, so, and I can tell that um, that number one or two was also pay. Yes? So people are saying that they do have a low pay that they expected. They do have an adequate total compensation. However, in the combination with other reasons and then with the combination of the other reasons, the number one become toxic cor corporate culture and the pay becoming number 16 of reason why people resign. 
And what is a toxic corporate culture means? It is defined in this research as a failure to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. The number second reason is the work and workers feeling disrespected, and it very much correlates is what we see in the Pew Research Center outcomes. And the number three is about unethical behavior. And that's exactly if you look, and this really was related to my experience on the working place. Yes, people tend to, to talk about the pay, but we do definitely need to ask much more questions to understand why people are leaving. And therefore, um, uh, the, some conclusions were draw on the pay and pay's impact on resignation. That yes, people have the price when they are leaving the job. They might leave also for the higher pay, but then it's all about how we do we acknowledge enough those people for them not to go out. We also know that the employees are risking when they change their jobs because they in literally changing what they know now and can navigate within the current environment with something that they don't know and they don't know whether it will work out or not. That is also risk of the employees. The pay, it is much more important for people who are currently unemployed because when you're already employed, you are, okay, so, ah, somebody sharing the presentation. Uh, yes, yes, we do it now. It's okay, we okay, can see good, good. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yes, they, we are looking for pay, but we're always looking for another pay in combination with other factors. And then it's all about whether I acknowledge the performance of the, of the employee. And many employees are saying if the inflation is around 10%, for example, and you are a high performance employee and receiving your increase only for 5%, you are not really bringing a lot in your paycheck. Uh, and, in, and the last one, in many conversations, when we ask people why they're leaving, they're coming up with a very nice, vague phrase, I'm leaving for the better opportunity, or I don't have enough career developments. And people are failed, to explain why it is. Therefore, if we are really talking about the great resignation and we are still focusing on pay, we need to shift a little bit the focus. Pay is always coming with some other attributes of the workplace. And that's what MIT research is about. And that's why Very easily, we can come for some HR non negotiables because that's the things and that's the topic uh, also recovered across many, uh, many presentations. Very much going tightly with understanding of the retention because with a great resignation, we need to think about finally how to retain. Yes, we need to recruit, but it's better to retain our employees. And can you sh start sharing the second slide? Next slide. And the, the first topic, the non-negotiables that were discussed everywhere, is where the HR is placed organization. And that HR needs to be really more strategic. And strategic means that we understand business more and we are not just proposing some actions, but we are proposing actions that will fit the strategy of the organization. And it's also very much connected to what James said. If we are doing the job of the managers, and the majority of the cases we are doing some jobs instead of the managers, it's very difficult to look from outside and just thinking about uh, what exactly the organization needed. The second one, non-negotiable, and where all our efforts need to be there. It's a leader's effectiveness. Yes, very standard phrase. People are joining companies but leaving managers, but that's true. And then, unfortunately, we can find out about some issues only on the stay interviews or exit interviews. Yeah, 
and the leaders effectiveness is also very important because leaders are shaping the people in the organization. Leaders are delivering the values for the organization. Leaders are really helping people to achieve the results. And our focus should be on leaders to help us to build more sustainable organization. Number three that was really uh, discussed, it's about the future of work itself, because COVID showed out a lot of changes. And then there are a lot of discussion about future work. It's about the work itself. What is work is, how it is changing. Does people still do what they do for 20 last years or something is new in their jobs? Then the second thing is, how is the work done? Do I continue to do something? I don't know writing on the paper, but there are a lot of digitalizations happens around and I really need to obtain new skills or I need to know a little bit more than I knew before. And that is also a big topic and that's very much connected to the skills gap and the workplace. And remember, we said that the starting point, many people are saying that the workplace is not evolving, but people change their workplace. COVID help people to rethink how they want to work and how they see the workplace. And that's why for us it's also important. Number four, it's about the talent life cycle experience. And um, that's very interesting because remember about the toxic culture, number one resignation for MIT research. It's meaning that uh, people are not appreciate in diversity and inclusion. Also, people are not feel respectful. Expectations of talent are changes. So they wanted very comfortable, mentally balanced cultures in the workplace. They wanted more often communication. They wanted to build relationships across and talent expected to build much more faster careers. So people, talents are not expecting to grow and make the career within the 20 years. We are now talking about the career that grows within the months, not years. And the tenure of the talent, really talent, is short enough. And therefore, all our accelerated development programs and talent programs and the way how we appreciate talents need to be changed and need to be faster. We need to propose much more faster career passes, much more shorter, uh, shorter periods of learning. And I think the last one, we need to focus with all the things above, we need to focus on the organizational resilience and agility. And because of the fast pacing environment from outside, uh, sometimes our people are not ready and we are learning on the way, but we need to, to bring and bridge the gaps of skills. We need to put the proper culture in place in order to bring uh, the organizational uh, organizations for sustainable growth. And if you will took all these five things in combination the, with a big resignation, we are not really talking about pay, we are talking about the culture and leadership. Because everything is above, and if you can put another one, so everything that we are talking about, yes, people start discussing pay first, but when you dig deeper, it's ended up with culture and leadership. And that's why resi organizational resilience, talent management, the work itself, it's really non-negotiables for HR professionals that we really need to work, to work harder with the business to provide proper solutions in order to move further. It's really reflected with me, uh, uh, with my personal experience. Therefore, uh, that's why I bring it to share with you. And I think uh, I think I have a one more slide, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because of course they, we had during the conference quite a big uh, quite a big uh, store where you can buy a lot of books, and there were a lot of uh, many presenters who were sharing their workouts. And uh, can you show the next slide? Yeah. 
And uh, then I would recommend you to, based on what I heard and what I observed in the conference, some books are really standing out. And then uh, my recommendation would be about the Holocaust, it's about the engagement, the state interviews, it's about the engagement. We really need to rethink the retention, resilience ready, and the empathy advantage. So I think five books that is here, it's recommended from me just to just to go and shape our thinking in that direction. Thank you. Irina, thank you very much. I have my question for you and uh, I know that it's, um, I know I was with almost, I was with you two times and you were in that conference three times. Are you going the fourth one? Are you uh, going yet? Yeah. I didn't uh, make my mind. I didn't make my mind yet, but I hope I will. And uh, as I remember the previous time you, the first time you visited Shrimp Conference was Chicago. Can you share your experience about city and everything? Maybe some, some something personal? Well, I like the uh, city of Chicago. It's uh, for me, it's much more comfortable than Las Vegas. Like Las Vegas has a very kind of uh, very festive vibe, and Chicago is a very comfortable city uh, to be. Uh, like uh, partially the architecture and the down uh, downtown. Uh, but yes, I think Chicago conference was my first one, and from that first conference, I really bring a lot of uh, materials and it helped me to create employer branding campaign and communication with employees on my workplace back in Ukraine. So I really I really kind of take a lot of information that I just rethink, tailor made for my organization, but the food of thought I took from the conference. Okay. And one more thing, I, I still, I mean, just I'm trying to get your impression from Bill Clinton. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not living in the United States, but I think everybody knows Bill Clinton. He was quite a long uh, in presidential area. I really like the discussions uh, and the interview we have. And uh, for, the, for those who doesn't know, Bill Clinton introduced a number of acts related to the human resources that helps, uh, for example, Family and Medical Act, where people has much more stability in their medical support, also about childhood immunization. It's also how we can integrate into society people with disabilities. And um, he also introduced uh, and followed some diversity decisions in his um, uh, in his presidency, where his first focus was on professional level rather than the education. And I really like his answer because we are facing now labor shortages, but we are still looking for the education proper education or higher education. We are limited and we are not really looking for the uh, for the experience. And he said, yeah, we should, yeah, we should really ignore it because the change um, changes are too many. Yeah. So, yeah, I have only positive impressions and his leadership. He's very humble, uh, very soft speaker, you know, so uh, the way how he even uh, described the things is in a very respectful and calm manner, and I really like it. As a leader, I would love to work for him. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. I think the question, Katya, um, can you share any success stories or case studies of organizations that have effectively tackled talent shortage without primarily relying on increased pay? Well, unfortunately, no. And that is the whole discussion we have on the conference. We all focusing on pay and we know that due to inflation, due to the COVID, the cost of living is increasing. We need to tackle pay. But then sometimes, um, yeah, but the thing is the pay is also the perception because we all know that the pay is a very basic hygiene factor. And we, if we will not tackle the culture and leadership and all the things in between, we will always be having the discussion on pay. But if we will have other things, 
then our pay discussions would be lesser. But I don't think we will remove the pay discussion completely. Yeah, because it's a very human side to really think what is a paycheck you're bringing every month home. I agree. I completely agree. So it's the question is that we should pay, but we shouldn't focus only on payment and without working on a culture. It's impossible to have the best talents and to keep the best talents. So Irina, thank you very much. I know that you are limited with your time. Thank you for joining us yeah. today. Thank you. Last today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would like to invite one of the most successful shrimp partner. Uh, Zahid Mubarak, Shrim SCP, CEO of HR Metrics, President of Shrimp Forum Pakistan. And as uh, James said, we met every year, well, at least once in a year, but it's really like a family. And I really say that uh, Zahid is a friend of mine. And it's always a pleasure to spend at least these four days discussing what's going on, how this, I mean, how Shrim is moving in a different areas and see the different perspective and find some new ideas. Uh, and I really can say that Zahid has a lot of ideas, a lot of different perspective on what's, how HR profession should develop and what's new, what is really trendy right now in the world. So Zahid, please. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I, I'm audible. OK, great. So thank you, Katrina, for this wonderful opportunity. It's uh, really a great honor uh, to talk to such a global forum. Uh, definitely SHRM uh, conference participation is a great honor. And I would like to share with you the, uh, some of the key uh, takeaways that I, ha I have of, uh, by attending this conference. Uh, I think I became the SHRM member in 2008. And uh, the first conference that I attended was in 2011. And uh, from there onward, I have been uh, trying to be regular. And uh, many people ask me because going from one part of the planet uh, to the another side, uh, obviously it requires a lot of time, a lot of uh, resources. Uh, so people ask me uh, why you're so enthusiastic to attend the conference. And I just give them a simple answer. Uh, though I have worked with almost uh, 16 uh, different nationalities uh, by the, uh, in, by, uh, while I was developing the standards as a consultant, the speakers, I've been, uh, so I t always tell them that when I am in my own country, I feel that I know a lot about the HR, but when I go to the Sham conference, interact with the uh, very knowledgeable people, the speakers, the attendees, uh, uh, the vendors with such a cutting edge solutions. So I feel that I know nothing about the HR. So this is a kind of a gap that I try to cover uh, during the uh, after having attending the conference. The another reason uh, I think the strong reason is a strong ROI. Let me put it in a very uh, straight way. There is a huge payoff, the financial payoff, uh, the kind of tools, the techniques that you learn and you are able to bring back to your community, uh, share with them, help the individuals and the organization to grow. And I think uh, that's how you benefit uh, yourself and also the community. So uh, as far as my topic is concerned, uh, that's linking the people analytics with the sustainability. Short of it, I would like to uh, give you a brief introduction about myself and my company, and then we uh, would like to talk about some of the key takeaways that I had from the conference. HR metrics, I think uh, it's more than 10 years of uh, its existence. Uh, we have expertise in primarily in the data analytics, and uh, we can proudly say that we have developed the highest number of the people in the world on the people analytics standard the ISO 30414, uh, which has been developed by the uh, committee in, ISO, in the Geneva. And I'm the one of the pioneer member of the TC260. Uh, we contributed toward developing the 29 global standards. Uh, one of the prime standard is ISO 30414. And our highest number of the alumni are in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, SHRM, it's a great partnership uh, that we have almost, I think, uh, uh, since uh, 2014. It has been a great honor, I think, to benefit uh, from some of the tools that we have been able to bring back to the home. 
Apart from that, the DE, DEI, uh, which is a subject very close to my heart, and I've been a member of the Board of Directors, the Center for Global Inclusion USA. This is the body in the United States uh, which has developed a global standard on the global diversity, equity, and inclusion benchmark with the collaboration of 112 global experts. Fortunately, I'm one of them. So this is brief about the company. Ola, can you please move the slide? Right, coming back to the conference. Uh, those who have the experience of attending the conference know that it's a great opportunity to get an exposure to a wide variety of subjects that include the global HR, diversity and inclusion, the compensations, the HR department of one as identified and highlighted by the Jane Baker, technology, data analytics, uh, leadership development, recruitment, people management. So very good assortment of the uh, area of the expertise that you can relate with your function. And then obviously you don't have a time to attend more than 200 concurrent sessions, the mega sessions, the uh, morning sessions, which is attended by one of the celebrity uh, speaker. So you always have to pick and choose what is more relevant. Uh, what are the areas uh, which uh, for which you have a more passion? So as I mentioned, the diversity and inclusion, the leadership development and the HR analytics, those are the areas that I excite me more. And uh, some of the things that I found new in this conference, I would like to talk about this. Can you move next? Uh, one of the new initiatives that I came across, although the initiative is not new, it exists, I think, uh, from this platform for more than 35 years, the linkage. But the I came to know for the first time that the women leadership, women in leadership, it's a very good program by the Sherm. And so, yeah, the one of the new development is that Sherm has acquired the linkage and they are planning to do it in a very successful way. They're already doing it. What I liked about this uh, this initiative uh, that makes it different from the another that it's not an event, it's not a training, it's not a seminar, it's a process. An ongoing process of engaging the women who have the potential to grow and they want to grow so how they can overcome their hurdles and they have identified the hurdles in seven different areas uh, in the form of the bias the uh, clarity uh, the kind of recognition uh, personal branding networking you know making uh, asking making themselves more accountable and in this process trying to overcome the inner critic so this initiative is available on the shrm website and uh, they have amazing uh, list of speakers. I think next event they are having in Orlando and more than uh, I think around 1600 people from around the world are likely going to attend. Next please. So this is a list of I think some of the speakers, not all of them, they are going to speak uh, in this uh, 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 event that's going to be held in uh, Orlando in uh, I think 13 to 16 November. Next please. Next, uh, the thing that I learned over there was uh, basically uh, the uh, taking over of the CEO Academy by the SHRM. I think this is a very strategic move uh, for the not only for the SHRM, but for the HR. I've been thinking in the past that in the organization, the chief people officer is the CEO. But uh, in many cases, the CEOs, they come from the non HR background that the finance, audit, marketing, risk, engineering, and even certain cases, the ID. So they don't have the exposure to people's side of the uh, organization. So I think in this is a very good way of, uh, you know, blending the HR. So uh, once that uh, the SHRM, you know, engages the speakers, Obviously, the, uh, the CEOs, uh, the, the, the SHRM engages the CEO. They would like to stay, you know, tuned to their own. And uh, some of the things around that, but uh, this is a good way of, you know, understanding or giving them exposure about the HR so that they are able to give more consideration and more importance to the HR. And I'm trying in my humble capacity. I don't see an immediate success because I know the costing of all these initiatives is quite high. And it should it would take a considerable time to convince people 
you know, to because when you go abroad uh, to uh, when you travel internationally, there are certain additional expenses, including the travel, etc. But I see a lot of value in this initiative and I feel confident to, you know, market it to my own community. So that was, a, I think, a second a new learning in this conference. Third, can you move to the next slide? That is the uh, people analytics. Now, people analytics has been one of the favorite topic of this entire conference. And you understand that in the conference, the focus is more on the HR perspective, which is essentially required because you have the HR people. But I see the people analytics from a very large standpoint. And that large standpoint is that how we can connect the dots between the HR and the business and all the stakeholders around the business, that the investors, the shareholders, the regulator, the union. So in the overarching framework, one of the uh, drive which is taking place around the world is the sustainability. And whenever you talk about the sustainability, the three pillars come to your mind, environment, social and the governance. Obviously, we are the HR people, so we have to see that what are the areas where we can contribute and how we can relate the HR with the overall sustainability of the enterprise so that we are being recognized. We are given the due considerations and people really regard it, regard the HR as strategic component of the organizations. Next. Now, in this regard, some of the key developments that really give, I think, the tremendous uh, importance and put the CHR on the spotlight. One of the development within the United States is that there's an organization called the Tomo Ocean. The Tomo Ocean conducts valuation of the 500 fortune companies every year. The amazing discovery is that they found that in 500 fortune companies, more than 90% of the value creation comes through the intangibles now. Intangibles include the brand, the patents, the marketing, the innovation, and the human capital, which is the driver. And one of the consumer of the organizational resources is a key component of the value creation. So you can see a clear departure. If you look at this picture 45 years ago in 1975, the value of the intangibles was less than 17%. Now they're more than 90%. That means that a CHRO should have a dominance within the board, within the top and top management in terms of the influence and the decision making. Now here's a question mark whether the CHRO enjoys that kind of significance, the dominance, or you can say the importance within the C-suite, but so that all the decisions related to the HR are being, are not on the HR, but the organization that's being done with the consultation, I feel there's a question mark. And it's not that what I say, and you move to the next slide, there has been a survey uh, in worldwide by an organization. Please move, next slide. Yeah, so there's a global survey uh, with, in which the people were, the uh, respondents were asked, how do you consider the HR or the S component within the ESG? And 50% of 51% of the people said, they said that we consider it more of a tick box. That means that majority of the people think that HR data is about the number of the people hired, number of the people trained, the number of the people dehired, number of the people engaged. No, that's not the analytics. That is what the, the key message. The, 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 the difference between the traditional HR accounting and the analytics is just like the accounting and finance. In accounting, you do a lot of day-to-day -day bookkeeping, reconciliations, the ledger maintenance, all kind of data. But when you condense the data into a meaningful information, that cannot tell you what has happened but also tells you what is likely going to happen in the future in the form of the statements like the cash flow, like the profit and loss uh, and the balance sheet. So in the similar manner, now there's a requirement. There's an expectation from the HR that since a huge investment is going into the human capital, the HR needs to come up with a more sophisticated information regarding the disclosure as how the HR is going to drive the organization with the help of the, some of the key metrics. 
Next. Now, in this regard, uh, the various standard setter organizations have become active. Uh, for example, the uh, in the Europe, you have the European Union, and they are going to come up uh, with a law which is almost in the final stages of the publication. This is called the CSRD, Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. And I'll share with you a talk about the explicitly top 10 metrics which are essentially required for an organization to sustain. And this CSRD is not going to be applicable only to the organization within the Europe, which are around 50,000 plus. This is also going to be applicable to the US organization, which have at least one or more than one subsidiary uh, within the Europe, which are around 3000 US organizations. Likewise, the other organizations around the world, they always look for the trends. They look for the best practices. So expectedly, this uh, this regulation is going to be more of a global regulation like GDPR. So I think again, there's an opportunity and the challenge for the HR. Why opportunity that HR people have the possibility of coming to the forefront of the business? And if they don't, they're not able to do it in an effective way, going beyond the tick box exercise, they're going to be replaced by somebody who is who has a better know how of the data analytics. Similarly, the International Organization of the Securities and Exchange Commissions, they are harmonizing their sustainability standards. And myself, I'm a member of the Pakistan Stock Exchange on the ESC uh, uh, disclosure, uh, you know, the regulation which is in the process of forming. We have already, uh, our regulator has already published the recommendation of the steering committee. And uh, uh, worldwide, uh, the US uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, they have already published a rule. It's in fact, it was a modification of the rule, which is called SK regulations by putting the human capital disclosure as mandatory for the organization, but still they are going to move to a more precise mechanism. That regulation is more principle based, but now going forward, the consideration is to make it more rule based to identify explicitly what needs to be done. Similarly, the other standard chartered organization, the IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, International Federation of Accountants, International Integrated Reporting Council, all working in the similar directions. Modalities could be different. The name of the metrics could be different, but the goal is to identify some of the key metrics uh, which call, uh, which are essentially required to sustain an organization in the long run. Next, please. Now, if, if I talk about my total experience of, you know, working with a different worldwide organization because I had the opportunity to interact with the Europe, the US, the UK, the Australia, I think the Indonesia, Singapore, uh, the, the concept of the metrics for the disclosure uh, is not new. This wheel was already invented because if you look at some of the standard setter organizations, US sustainable, UN Sustainable Development Goals, Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, International Shareholders Services, World Economic Forum, Big Four Audit Firms, Global Reporting Initiative, International Organization for Standardization, International Integrated Reporting Council, Human Management, uh, uh, Human Capital Management Coalition, which enjoys an investment of three trillion dollars in the United States. They were the first one to ask the Securities and Exchange Commission in a formal, through a formal letter, that the human capital should not be just be left to the descriptions and the narratives, because many times people say particularly the business leaders say people are most valuable assets. Now this is a lip service. This is a narrative. How you can demonstrate this narrative in the form of an equation on the balance sheet on the profit and loss, sta loss statement because over there the HR is reported more of a cost. So now there's an opportunity for the organization because they're already standard. As I told you, the ISO has already published uh, 30414, many global organizations are certifying around that, that standards. And uh, we also certified a company in Japan and more companies are in the pipeline. Can you move next? So uh, I mentioned about the CSRD, it's going to be one of the global regulations. Uh, they have top 10 metrics. It's yet in the process of approval. 
uh, there may be a little, uh, you can say, modification, or they may be approved uh, same at is, as it is there. The it, now it's important for the HR is not to just look at the production of the information because calculating the turnover is not a rocket science. But can you relate the turnover or the retention with the productivity of the organization, with the profitability of the organization, or you can say that? What is the cost of 1% turnover? And if you improve the retention by 1%, how much is the payback to the organization? The financial payback to the organization, the form of the actual value, the measurable value, not just the lip service. So the, this provides a good assortment of the uh, some of the areas of the focus, which are and uh, which uh, which are important for the HR. And all these things, obviously, whenever the global standards are being developed, they are done with a lot of consideration. And there's a lot of due diligence so that they are really a value addition for the organization. Next. Now, the final thing that I want to talk about is that uh, we always hear about the data analytics, the people analytics, and many other fancy words that we hear. No one denies the importance of the human capital or the data analytics. Important thing is that how do we conceptualize and how can we operationalize the concept in a way that you can prove it? You cannot just say it is important. You can put it on a paper, right? So for that matter, one of the best models that I've come across, and I'm not the inventor of this model. I'm one of the active follower. There was this was developed by the father of the people analytics, the Jack Fizens. I think in the beginning, I think uh, once the HR data analytics was uh, invented in the previous century, uh, he mentioned that treat the HR service as more of a product. Uh, or the service to your customer. Now, how it's a service? Supposedly, I have this um, cell phone with me, and the whosoever produces the cell phone would like to sell it in the form of some of the attributes or the characteristics, right? Because if I buy a cell phone, I will look at the sum of the component, like how much does it cost? But cost is not the only consideration. Some, in many cases, you are willing to incur a higher cost if you have a better value how much uh, you know the number of the items you can buy uh, that the volume in the same cost if i go for a lesser version maybe i can buy the two cell phones in the same cost what's the turnaround time for the delivery what's the turnaround time for the service and once if i buy the cell phone i'm giving this is this an example of a product am i a retained customer or I, I, you know, with the passage of time, I find that no, it's not a good product. I move to another product. So retention of the product customer is important. And once the customer uses the product, there's always a, some kind of satisfaction or the dissatisfaction. If you're satisfied, you become referred to the other. If you're dissatisfied, you basically have a bad mouthing about the product. And final one is the ROI. Whenever we invest in a business, there's always a cost, but the cost is incurred with the aim of bringing a financial value. So a comparison of the in, in a return on investment and the cost gives you a figure. Now we are not going to get into a calculations. We can have some other time. I'm happy to you know give more time to Katrina on how we can operationalize. But what I wanted to say is that the typical model where you identify the five attributes of your product, the HR, like hiring, you can calculate the total people hired, the total people, the cost, time to hire. And from the um, quality perspective, you can calculate the retention, you can calculate the performance index. From the ROI perspective, you can calculate the impact. Now, if you look at the entire uh, uh, this figure, you can club the overall analytics into three areas. The efficiency matrix, which you call the uh, volume, time, and cost. The effectiveness, we talk about the quality for the stakeholder, the line managers, and the outcome, which is for the CEO, the shareholder, board of directors. So you're in a very good position to have a proper stakeholders arrangement for your organizations if you're able to go ahead with this. Traditionally, what happens in the data analytics that people do a lot of calculations, but they're stuck in the efficiency, volume, time, cost. They need to go beyond that because your line managers should validate your HR. So going to the effectiveness metrics, and if you're able to do it, the metrics which are valued by the CFO, the CEOs, and the board of directors, the outcome, we need to you know, achieve proficiency in this area. So there was a thought that it's important to just look beyond the traditional HR mechanism of looking at the HR bit. Yeah, HR is important, no one denies. 
but primarily we are the business guy first and then the HR. So connecting the dot with what is important for the stakeholders and then coming up with a framework where you can justify your existence at not just the cost, but the profit center for the organization. That's all that I had to say, nothing else. And uh, thank you so much once again, Katrina, for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much. You know, even me overwhelmed with information. <laughs> and actually, uh, despite of the fact that I was studying in the math class and it was just six girls and 23 guys, I can say that it's the area to, I mean, just to, for development, I think for every HR, we really need to be focused more on the numbers and uh, it's really, I mean, it's important to know how to use, and we are all, we are now, now people started to talk really a lot about analytics in general, but please start at least with metrics. Learn how which one is really useful for your business, which one is correct, which one you should present to all stakeholders, and how to use this language to be a really strategic in a strategic role. Thank you, thank you very much, Zahid. And Zahid, by the way, um, are you going to Dubai conference? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, so meet you there. <laughs> yes, I'm going there as well. So it's November. Do you yeah. remember the date? One and two. One. And two. So the first two days, uh, I just want to invite uh, our um, auditory. If you want to go, it's the great time to go to Dubai. And just sharing my experience it's a very vibrant i mean place with such a special energy when you re people are running there and business is running there so it's really if you want to just to increase your speed a little bit <laughs> it's the right place to go <laughs> and so join us and uh, so i hope to see you soon thank you thank you for being with thank us you. today and I would like to invite Ludmila Garava, CHRO of our Grappas Paris group. And I know that uh, Ludmila will talk about transformation of HR role. As I said from the very beginning, um, we all understand how important are talents, how this human capital and how big our role is becoming in business. I really can say that bad things sometimes helps COVID helps business to understand and to make this big step to this point in our case if you talk about ukraine it's a second huge step uh, in our business ukrainian business are doing um, we really know how people can influence business but it gives us a big challenge how to be a strategic in HR role. Ludmila, please share your experience, share your insights and ideas. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you, Katya. Hello, everyone. I'm really honored to share my insights and impressions. Um, so I was it was my first HRM, uh, SHRM conference uh, and uh, they say that uh, my experience is the brightest, that's why, because it was first time. Uh, please uh, give me feedback if my uh, presentation is seen. No. Till now, no. Okay. Uh, okay. What about now? Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Just yes. the full screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Full screen, yeah, thank you. Um, so a couple of words about myself. I'm also certified uh, with uh, SHREM. Uh, uh, association and I'm senior HR professional, really honored to be. And I agree with James, with everything, with all the uh, advantages of uh, certification. Uh, first of all, it just gives a chance to uh, name and have a definition for everything we do at our work here. Yeah. And uh, definitely it helps uh, to have a voice in uh, your organization and uh, I will talk more about it uh, as it's part of my presentation. Um, so regarding the uh, conference, the key topics uh, that 
uh, sound that sounded for me. Yeah, it's um, welcome to never normal times. Uh, everybody and all speakers uh, mentioned and talking about post COVID times that we are living uh, uh, this uh, not uh, simple period and uh, that uh, COVID was not actually the last um, bad thing that happened could happen and uh, we were nodding uh, those from Ukraine. Yeah, we know it for sure. So mental health, uh, yes, of course, as people still have an impact uh, of COVID uh, and um, corporate culture transformation and uh, as a result, HR role shift, uh, HR leadership, diversity and inclusion. And uh, what I can say is that um, uh, while there at the conference, you can not only hear about all these things, but you can see a lot. Uh, so you can see a lot of examples of diversity and inclusion even uh, during the conference. Um, so I was impressed how many participants uh, uh, in the conference uh, in uh, wheelchairs and uh, they are moving freely from the halls uh, to the stage, from the stage. So it's uh, an opportunity to see really aged employees um, who are involved in organizing conference and just all around the state. So that's why it's really a great experience, and really worth seeing it. Um, so speaking about other topics, so you know that there were more than 300 speakers and more than 300 sessions. So here on the slide, uh, just some uh, really um, unexpected, maybe, maybe funny, yeah. So it's a pity that uh, I could not uh, be present uh, at all of the interesting topics as I had to choose, yeah. But uh, you see that such topics discussed as transgender, let's say, inclusion at work, yeah. And it's quite innovative for Ukraine, yeah, but it's uh, what uh, they are working with uh, in the States. So um, it's about understanding the benefits of dogs in the workplace. And uh, yes, uh, in Ukraine, uh, uh, in IT companies, uh, we can uh, we, we can already see it. Yeah. So, but it's not just generally um, wild widespread. Yeah. So, and uh, I I would like to say several words about uh, big, really huge uh, CRM exposition. So um, it's, you know, that uh, there are more than 500 vendors uh, uh, there and uh, all of them uh, uh, are doing some service for uh, HR uh, departments or organizations and um, some of them are really uh, those that we know, recruiting organizations, yeah, then uh, uh, any Insu medical insurance organizations and a lot of uh, training organizations. Uh, so, uh, so, but the atmosphere in the expo is really great as the, they are competing with each other and they are competing for your attention. And sometimes they're making great shows, quizzes, uh, they're showing wine, champagne, yeah, and uh, um, giving out a lot of prizes, a lot of small uh, gifts, souvenirs, so it's it's really worth seeing it and visiting if you are there. So and of course uh, some things that uh, uh, impressed me uh, as uh, I uh, it just uh, what you could see that um, one of it's actually not was not one. Some vendors uh, offered um, room for breastfeeding mothers in the office. Yeah, so it means that uh, they. Actually, all of them, they provide the whole solution. Yeah, if it's about breastfeeding mothers, it's uh, they offer to get furniture necessary from them yeah, and uh, all the equipment and they explain where it's best to be put in the office, how it should be used yeah, and so on. So, of course, uh, for the States, it's quite normal as the uh, uh, maternity leave is for two months only. And most women return to workplace uh, still breastfeeding. Yeah. So, but probably we should think about that in Ukraine too. Yeah, in Europe. Then dentist in the office, and I even uh, asked, uh, uh, really, are you going to bring a dentist to the office? And uh, yes, they said, of course, uh, uh, it's not about the surgery in the office. Yeah, but it's about uh, checkup, regular checkup for all employees, and it's about a whitening procedure. Procedure. Yeah, so it's 
I found it really interesting. Yes, and but in the office uh, during SRAM exposition, you could see it in your eyes. Yeah, so uh, you see in the photo uh, the small puppies, and there was actually a line from the conference participants, uh, so to pet them. Yeah, so and to spend some time. And again, they uh, provide you with the solution how to organize this space in the office, uh, starting with wallpapers uh, and uh, finishing with uh, uh, feeding zones. Yeah, and uh, again, what equipment to use and a lot of other stuff. Yeah, and uh, uh, also um, pets uh, medical insurance is really popular as uh, an employee perk. Uh, in organization, so that's why you can see a lot of vendors providing pets insurance, not only employees medical insurance. So now about the uh, uh, HR role transformation. Uh, so I actually um, attended uh, two uh, sessions on this topic, but uh, today I will concentrate on Vivian Blade's presentation. So Vivian Blade uh, is the um, famous in the state's leadership and resilience expert, and uh, she's an, also an author of uh, a lot of books. So uh, I think Irina Brzyak already mentioned these five non-negotiable strategic priorities so that HR, HRs uh, should have in focus. Yeah, uh, so I will just um, repeat them. Uh, so HR value, value creation. So here I have um, uh, um, slide from the research. Uh, so about perception of HR as highly effective professional among non-HR professionals. Yeah? And of course, uh, managers and top managers are meant here. So despite of the fact that uh, it's growing uh, comparing to 2021, uh, so as in 2023, it's 42%. Yeah, I, I meaning that 42% uh, of managers um, agree that uh, HRs are highly effective yeah, professionals. So we still have uh, where to grow, yeah, as it's not 100% and it's not really close to 100%. And the second half of this slide explains why it is important that organization has highly effective HR professionals. So then uh, leaders effectiveness. Uh, so as again, it was said above uh, and before that employees live in organization. Um, so as we say in Ukraine, that people come into organization and they leave uh, from the manager. Yeah. So you can see one of the uh, reason why employees live in uncaring and uninspiring leaders. And then it's, it's uh, HR's role uh, to work with leaders and to train them, to motivate, to inspire them, yeah, to be inspiring leaders. So future of work, uh, it's changing. And uh, yes, 74% uh, of the companies uh, in the States already uh, announced that they are going to work in hybrid regime forever. 74%, it's a lot. And uh, of course, uh, again, uh, HR need to adapt managers to this new regime. Employees help employees uh, come through all the changes. Consistent and positive talent life cycle experience. And it's yes, it's connected with shifting expectations. Again, Irina Brzyak already mentioned that, that uh, now um, it, candidates, uh, so you see that 44% consider uh, themselves uh, in terms of months, not years, in the organization. And of course, we should build all our processes, uh, keeping that in mind. Yeah, and 24% uh, expect to be less than two years. So, and it's starting from uh, CVs that uh, we uh, analyze. Uh, yeah, if uh, earlier I remember there was. Um, even a strong requirement that the person should work at least three years at one uh, organization. Yeah, so now it doesn't work. Yeah, and so you have to, to teach your leaders, uh, your managers that it's not working nowadays. Uh, then focus on traditional employees life cycles that we all know from the books. Uh, yeah, it fails to recognize changing dynamic of the future of work. Instead of uh, the traditional life cycle, there's a new one and it's uh, six C's, 
yeah, you can see that all words here start with C. Um, so cultivate uh, instead of um, attract, it's cultivation. Yeah, and um, it's how I understand it in my organization as I work in uh, um, agricultural uh, sphere. I say that uh, we don't even go now to universities. Uh, we go to schools and even kindergartens, yeah, and start talking about our organization, about uh, living in the village, about working on the land. Uh, so then connect. Uh, you connect your employees, your candidates to your organization via social media. You're yeah, showing uh, so what you do in your organization and what mission your organization has and other things. Then you care for employees and you show them that you care and you again learn to train your managers to care and your leaders to be caring. Then champion. Uh, so you uh, understand that employees want to have achievements and you develop culture that supports this and uh, understands its employees needs. Uh, then uh, contribute. Uh, your employees want to contribute and want uh, to feel that they are part of something big. Yeah. And then the last stage is close. Uh, so uh, you should close any interaction with your employee, with your candidate, yeah, um, as they say, beautifully. And actually one of the vendors uh, at the expo, uh, so they offered um, taking care of um, any closure, closures, yeah, uh, either it's retirement or is it's um, something else. So they offered uh, standard um, presents, gifts, um, certificates, whatever. So and yes, uh, the last priority is organizational resilience and agility. Again, your organization should be trained and we are responsible for that. So and uh, of course to um, have to 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 take organization through all these changes, HR has to have a voice uh, or a seat at the table. Yeah. So and for that, uh, so Vivian's uh, recommendation is to be curious meaning that you shouldn't concentrate only on in your HR uh, workflow, but you should understand everything around not only HR, your organization, your country, your so world trends and so on. You should be strategic. <coughs> and again, how you can be strategic? Strategic, you need to understand that uh, who who takes decisions in, on, in the organizations and uh, those are financial people, yeah. So to talk with financiers, uh, you need to understand numbers and to talk uh, with numbers to them. Yeah, and HR metrics, yeah, would be first step to that. Be visible and present. It means again, people should see you. So they should see you in their meetings, in their activities, uh, in their on the train, uh, on on the job trainings, and so you do. Um, researches, uh, you do surveys and so on and so forth. Communicate your value. Uh, yes, uh, this step is important too, as uh, we sometimes tend to be too modest. Yeah. And scale your influence, of course. Uh, again, uh, numbers will help. Uh, so as um, uh, to scale our influence, we need to present numbers, some numbers. Oh, and then I have really little time left. So, but uh, I would like to share uh, some of the things from the research, an interesting SRAM research. Uh, it was called the next pandemic, uh, loneliness and the power of casual collisions. So, and uh, I will be really short with the outcomes of this research. Uh, so, uh, some just some interesting facts as uh, it's mm, quite profound. So, uh, so what um, interested me uh, that uh, actually they measured uh, and discovered that um, US employees uh, think that they are more productive in the office and um, especially the Z uh, generation. Yeah, uh, so but uh, at the same time, they have more life balance, life work balance uh, when they work remotely. Yeah, and again, this is our 
<laughs> HR starts to manage all this. Yeah. So um, then um, interesting thing that burnout uh, didn't disappear. Uh, and actually it is um, it is present uh, whatever regime organization works in yeah if it's uh, on site or hybrid or remote so burnout is still an issue uh, so loneliness and isolation uh, unfortunately covid uh, impact uh, is so that people feel more lonely now and uh, it has nothing uh, um, common with isolation. Yeah, um, so you can be in an organization with people, but still feel lonely. And uh, so what's what's most interesting that um, uh, off site uh, or on site, sorry, on site regime doesn't help. So just to return people to the offices won't help. So just at the end will be quickly what will help. Yeah. Collaboration with colleagues, yes, uh, when uh, we are not working in the offices, uh, the collaboration is lower. So, but it doesn't mean again that we cannot change it if we work remotely or in hybrid regime. Yes, and uh, casual collisions uh, help with uh, mental well-being because they impact uh, um, positively on mental well-being. Uh, so, and electronic communications uh, are now important and of course those employees who worked remotely, they are a lot better in using electronic communications than those uh, who uh, continued working on site. So, quick resume and recipes, uh, what uh, as HRs we should do, how we should work with these evolving workplaces. Yeah. So first of all, um, we need to understand that uh, people need to collaborate to socialize with each other and uh, they should have uh, opportunities to do it even if they work uh, remotely. I liked one of the examples uh, that uh, one of the speakers um, demonstrated. He said that in their organizations, uh, they understood it quite quickly and uh, they implemented such a rule that every employee has to choose uh, an employee and have a coffee with this employee from 15 to 45 minutes. And uh, so they understood that if they do not control it, uh, people will not probably do it. So that's why they implement it via their electronic system. Yeah, you need to register it and you need to choose an employee you are drinking coffee with. And you can do it uh, uh, actually recommended to do it on the phone, have your coffee, even get out and have a small walk while you're talking to the person and you're not talking uh, about work. Yeah, so this is also one of the requir requirements. You discuss non-work um, uh, non things. Uh, so, and the system doesn't allow you to choose the um, same person every day. You can choose this person only within some time. Uh, and uh, they said then it started working, yeah, and it's what we should keep in mind. Uh, so whatever our regime is, we need to care about these things and to provide our employees these opportunities. So yes, of course, as mental health uh, is important and uh, as um, uh, people feel lonely, yeah, we need to implement uh, different mental uh, health trainings and it's hard so because it was a lot discussed in the state that it's hard because employees resist often resist so we should find uh, approaches how to do it so then uh, we need to pay attention to special needs employees have and uh, give them possibility to have a, a paid day off whenever they feel physically or mentally um, not well yeah and of course we need to uh, go on and to invest in uh, developing electronic ways of communications as uh, I start as the research started that pandemic wasn't uh, probably the last thing that um, requires isolation, people isolation. So I think my time is over, so that's why I'm ready to finish. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think all of uh, our any person from our auditory can feel 
how intensive was that four days, how many insights, how many ideas we can bring after these four days. And Mila, thank you. It was three big topics you covered. And if you have any questions, please ask them, put them in our chat and for sure I will transfer it to our speakers and I hope at the end of the meetings we will have time to to talk a little bit uh, more and to, to have an opportunity to ask questions. Thank you Ludmila, thank you. Especially it was very nice with puppies, it was really kind and I was afraid of puppies, it was really a huge line staying <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to play with them. Okay, automation and I in HR presented by fresh certified SHRIM SAP specialist <laughs> Karine Papikian. Karine, my congratulations. It's really big uh, achievement. I know that it takes a lot of time to prepare. And again, my congratulations. Karine Papikian, AX HRD of Parimach Ukraine. HR expert and consultant. Please tell us what's what's new about IE and HR. Thank you. Do you hear me well? Do you see my presentation? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's great. Uh, so thanks for having me here. Thanks for congratulations of um, SHRIM certification. Yeah, today in the morning I received the information with the details uh, about my uh, exam results and I'm really proud of myself and I really recommend my colleagues to pass this exam and to go through the all the educational process. It takes me four months uh, to to do it and uh, it it was a little bit challenging, but it's not impossible. It's absolutely possible. Uh, so just uh, keep trying, uh, do your best, uh, read the books, uh, uh, work with your uh, uh, colleagues, partners, uh, and uh, you will do it. So really recommend you. Uh, today I will cover one of the topics that uh, was presented on the SHRIM conference. It's uh, artificial intelligence and how we will work with the, this tool in HR life and of course in 15 minutes uh, I will not be able to cover all the interesting uh, aspects of this topic but still some of them I will try to share with you okay and um, I uh, really like how uh, one of the presenter started her presentation during the uh, conference uh, it was um, Carol Kibus, uh, she's uh, a vice president of uh, human resources, one of uh, the US company, and uh, she started uh, with uh, this kind of uh, phrase, yeah, disruptor or enabler, and uh, how this, this uh, disruptor, um, technological disruptors, uh, changing our life through the history. And then we are talking about artificial intelligence, or um, like in general uh, automation. Uh, we have to remember what, what kind of uh, disruptors uh, were in our life. And for example, like electricity, automobile, uh, airplanes, computers, smartphones, social media, and so on and so on. And now we are facing these artificial intelligences. Some of them think that it's not for them today. It's something that will come to your life maybe in one or two years. But believe me, it is uh, all already <laughs> on your table. It's already using uh, by a lot of providers, lots of companies and vendors. And please be, uh, be uh, more uh, specific in the, this uh, topic because it's our it's not our future it's our today life okay so um, why chat GPT is a big deal uh, like in general why all all, all of the people all, all uh, of the world speak uh, about this 
Well, then you see the numbers. We understand that's uh, like uh, one of the fastest uh, application that were downloaded uh, by users and more than 100 million users downloaded it from January and uh, it takes only five days uh, to reach one million users. Um, when we are talking about the money and about the funding, so OpenIE has raised a total of $11 billion in multiple rounds of funding. That's like huge numbers <laughs> of, uh, of dollars. And their latest funding closed uh, more than 300 million. So it's uh, quite interesting. And if you are working uh, like in invest investing area or you are investing your money in uh, some kind of the company, you have to pay attention on artificial intelligence and maybe put some money there because I believe that it's our future and we can uh, do it more, more money. Uh, thanks to a resource that uh, were made by SHRIM um, about automation and AI in HR. And uh, as you remember, or as you uh, and is you are a member uh, on the SHRIM um, platform, you can find a lot of different um, research topics. Uh, articles about uh, artificial intelligence, about automation in HR. Uh, so really encourage you to uh, become a membership. So uh, let's go to deeper in some uh, data uh, that we remember that we have to be data based and data driven. Uh, so in which areas does the HR currently utilize automation and or AI? So 79% using it in recruitment and hiring, 41% so, uh, in learning and development on talent and development, and 38% in performance management. You have to remember that um, if the process is ma easy manageable, yeah, and it's like routine process, it's more easy to um, put their artificial intelligence, okay? So if the performance management in the company more complicated process, looks like less company will uh, use it. Now, maybe in one or two years, then uh, more company will uh, manage this process, more structure and um, everything will be understandable and clear and everyone from this process will put, your, uh, put their effort in a really structured manner. Uh, in this case, this process maybe will be covered like more artificial intelligence, but not now from my perspective. And uh, how exactly organizations use automation and uh, or artificial intelligence to support recruiting and hiring activities. We remember that in recruiting and hiring, uh, we use it a lot. So interesting, just a little bit uh, deep down in recruitment, how, how exactly? So 69% uh, is more communication for different platforms. So like uh, we just put the information into our, uh, for example, ATS uh, for recruiters is the platform uh, where we can work with our applicants and they uh, just they understand how to uh, answer uh, the uh, question to our candidates, how to uh, start the conversation, how to proceed all the details uh, during the conversation from start to finish. So it's easy to manage. Uh, that's why it's like a huge number, like 69% they're using it in communication. Uh, 64% just a little bit lower to review and screen applicants resume. It's um, the same, it's easy process. Then you have a, a good uh, um, created job description, good de detailed job description. So you can easily compare the applicants and the job description. In this case, you can use artificial intelligence. In other case, then you have to, uh, you know, understand the, the uh, applicant, the resume and so on in a, a variety of different aspects. It will be not so easy using artificial intelligence. 52% uh, to automate candidate re, uh, research. So you just can uh, 
train your artificial intelligence platform to reach the, the candidates to find their own internet for social media platforms from all over the world and to bring them into your recruiter ideas. So, and uh, the, this, the latest one, 42% uh, to customers to target job, job posting or specific, in, uh, to specific groups. Now, we remember that um, um, not all of their uh, job uh, posting platforms and portals and web, uh, web uh, sites, they are not uh, uh, the same. So we have to, you know, uh, some kind of moderate the uh, job posting all the time. Then you put uh, the information there, even on LinkedIn, on other uh, Glassdoor site and so on. So that's why it's not the high um, percent here, but I think maybe yeah, the same in one, two years uh, if the um, the process of posting the uh, information there will be the same for everyone. Uh, in this case, yeah, we can uh, automate it like easy in one click, but for now, no, but I believe that we will uh, do it in the uh, nearest future. So, um, why do organizations use automation and are to support recruitment or hiring activities? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 85 percent uh, answer that it saves them time and or increases their efficiency. As I mentioned before, if it's routine tasks, tasks, if it's uh, uh, there is no need to human there to moderate all of this information, you can just put there on a schedule, just give some information and their system will do it without you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and next uh, information that I was interested in that why organization still don't want to use automation or artificial intelligence to support each other related activities. And of course, the answer is uh, uh, absolutely clear, understandable. So first of all, it's lack of uh, resources to properly audit or correct artificial intelligence algorithm. And we'll talk about it a little bit later, but shortly that uh, artificial intelligence, it's not something that is just uh, you or you, you put like you turn on and everything is just uh, appear and you turn off and it disappear. No, you have to manage the system. You have to uh, teach the algorithm. You have to put more energy in the data created and then the source will work on you. But before that, you have to put lots of in energy in this. So that's why um, company not ready to invest, invest in this like uh, right now. Uh, I believe that uh, in the future, yes, but 45, 44% it's not a high um, range, but still it is. Uh, and uh, a lack of knowledge about what tools would best fit their needs. So it's uh, more related about we uh, we don't know more about artificial intelligence and we still need to be educated by our vendors that provide us this information and uh, we're still scared about this, how we will use it, um, how it will help us. So we still like um, from uh, from the, you know, from the screen, we just uh, we just watch and we just try to understand uh, what's that and how we will use it. Um, and 35 percent, it's uh, answer like automation or AI lacks the human touch. Yes, correct, because um, uh, now I think that um, then you uh, will have a communication with the artificial intelligence tool, uh, like with robots. Uh, you will feel it because it's uh, it should be educated and now it's uh, doesn't have so much uh, information in database so that's why you have to put lots of energy there in uh, educate them uh, and then maybe in some some years uh, ahead it will more human but not now um yeah it, it, there is company that cannot afford it because of the learning process because of the implementation process because uh, if you have a recruitment uh, tool uh, some of the recruitment company they already in um, 
like add uh, this um, artificial intelligence um, uh, platform into their um, their product, but they charge you more money. So sometimes you just don't get, you can't afford it. And um, um, twenty five percent they like concerns that uh, artificial intelligence may uh, accidentally overlook or exclude the qualified applicants or employees. Of course, it can be because uh, it's automated system. If uh, something uh, not matched with the job description or with other uh, processes, uh, the system will think that it's not OK, so let just exclude it. That's why you have you, you have to uh, have these structured processes, uh, clear data. In this case, you will have a good result. Um, just a short overview of uh, how, uh, what kind of uh, HR processes you can or you will be able to cover um, with the artificial intelligence. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's all everything about the recruitment process because it's easy in uh, manage and manageable. So candidate selection, job offer, communication and so on. Another absolutely understandable and clear process it's creating handbook guides policies of course you will put some information from your side but the the basic information you can easily ask hey chat gpt hello how are you today hey, could you please uh, write me a guide about blah 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 and uh, it will send you some information so you go you just look through understand what is uh, okay for you you have what uh, must be clear what must be changed and then but but this basic information you don't need to create because it's already created you just upload it just download it and and uh, uh, just a little bit of change for example, chatbot support uh, for employees, uh, kind of uh, quiz and survey uh, for your, uh, you know, um, um, you know em employee track. Uh, another information like um, another useful thing that you can easily find all the information uh, about vendors, uh, about different topics that you have. But remember that. Uh, artificial intelligence, uh, especially chat GPT, uh, they um, stopped updating the information and uh, like it's information only before uh, 2021st, I guess. And uh, after that, it's not updated, but I think it will be uh, and more information will be there. But for now, you have to not just easily pick the information and think that it's correct. You have to stay still. You have to check it. You have to understand what's mentioned and maybe you have to compare with other information that you can find easily on Google. Uh, through learning and onboarding process, well, onboarding, I think that uh, in almost in all the company, it's a structured process, so you can just uh, go through the uh, onboarding uh, with newcomer. Uh, you, the system can easily understand what kind of information show today, tomorrow, in two weeks, in three weeks, what kind of quiz sent to this end. And uh, if we looks like we have some technical problems. Uh, let's see. I think the Karina will be back soon. Let's wait for a minute. I really hope it will work. So guys, uh, while we are waiting for Karina to be back, maybe you have some questions and I really wanted to inspire you to, I mean, just to share your, what is, what is interesting? What maybe, what is your, um, uh, what did you, okay, Karina, you're back. Yeah, we can see you, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, back, okay. On uh, what topic you finished? No, 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 okay, I just was asking to ask the question and share the impression about our speeches and everything. So you can continue. You're back. 
Uh huh. Because you know, then I'm talking about artificial intelligence, and your internet connection lost. It's just funny. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how dependent we are from, from yes. any kind yes. of technology. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. On this slide, yeah, you stopped. Yeah, yeah I stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just uh, a little uh, more about um, yeah what I wanted to give you or more information that the if system uh, trained well the system can highlight your uh, some of the employees they uh, like feeling bad or they rate you low so you can come back to them and ask why and the, about the learning. Uh, the lots of company they just uh, buy the not buy like uh, buy an access to the learning platform. They put the employees there. They uh, uh, train the platform how to uh, how to uh, teach uh, the employees uh, what kind of skills uh, uh, put their career map map so they can easily uh, go through uh, their career, understand what kind of next step they will see. So what else? Coaching, mentoring, performance management. For me, performance management in this case a little bit complicated, but about mentoring and coaching could be if person doesn't uh, doesn't need the uh, human touch, yeah, uh, because not all of us uh, needs face-to-face uh, uh, -face communication. So we just sometimes need um, just answer on uh, chat. That's all. Uh, well-being uh, support uh, in kind of emergency cases. So uh, the chat uh, as well can be trained and uh, give some um, help, uh, uh, give some information and support to your employees. And communication between employees, random coffee, so system can uh, understand uh, who is new there, what kind of interests uh, they have, so how they connect uh, with each other and uh, it will be uh, doing by uh, without your help. It just the system will understand uh, what uh, employees must be connected. Mm, of course, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, topics and um, about bias, yeah, that uh, we will uh, still face uh, using artificial intelligence and or uh, of course it will be still there because uh, we need to teach uh, the system how to understand the information and how to use this information. There is of course uh, some beneficial and challenging aspects uh, using artificial intelligence and um, because of the system learns from the historical data, we need to put the correct data, not biased data that uh, that it will be used. Uh, in other cases, uh, the system will understand that that biased information is correct and use it in uh, your daily work. So um, in, it's just a uh, screenshot from one of the presented um, Bill Curtis Davidson. Um, he was uh, presented this like an example of uh, bias. So as you can see from the screen, the uh, guy doesn't uh, have a picture on the wall and with the picture on the wall and based on the uh, beer 24 uh, company that shows the limits of use at ocean model for assessing personality traits and uh, here the uh, yellow and blue lines they show you that with uh, uh, this picture uh, kind of uh, openness uh, more uh, like he has more openness or extroversion but still like it's it's funny so uh, we cannot rely on this information it's just an example and as i mentioned before you always have to teach your um your your platform your artificial intelligence platform and it called prompt engineering it's uh, the way how you ask the questions and the uh, system from your questions learned they understand uh -huh, what do you want and uh, you put the information there the system uh, uh, combine it analyze and then uh, give it to you and uh, now uh, there is uh, plenty of vacation uh, vacancies on the market you can easily find it like prompting engineering um, 
I can say that it's like it's our future, but um, for some period of time, these vacancies will be really um, like really uh, like in the on the market. And um, by the way, I have a friend from uh, Barcelona, from Spain, and uh, he wrote a book about uh, prompt engineering. And this book was uh, 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 was wrote uh, by uh, Chad GPT. That's interesting thing. Uh, if you know Spanish, I can share with you <laughs> uh, this uh, book. Uh, of course, um, Regarding the regulations and uh, then we are talking about lots of data that will be created by artificial intelligence platforms around the world. We will do OK, who will manage this? Uh, this like bench of information about uh, people and uh, unfortunately or fortunately there is no clear regulators and um, uh, government structure that uh, will be uh, covered this um, chat GPT um, work, but in US there is uh, there are uh, a minimum three uh, government uh, structure that uh, say that OK, we are ready to take this advantage, uh, but in Ukraine we don't have. Uh, in the uh, European Union, um, maybe, uh, but I'm not sure. But still, it's a topic to uh, to see, to uh, to hear, and uh, no one knows who will be uh, in charge of this. And uh, because of that, uh, the main accent should be communication between you as an employer and employees. So just open and clear communicate that you are using artificial intelligence and uh, we are sorry that something is going wrong, but we want to be uh, here. We want to use artificial intelligence. Just give us feedback if something go wrong and so on. Um, and uh, of course, then we are talking about some pros and cons of using artificial intelligence. Let's go through just quick uh, pros. It's full automation routine tasks. Uh, but there is like one remark that maybe not full, semi full for now, maybe full later, then you will teach the system. Less mistakes, of course, uh, uh, it's not uh, human, uh, it's just data, that's all. Uh, but you have to be sure that you put clear data there. Uh, and then you will not have uh, any mistakes. Availability, so when we're talking about chat with employees or some kind of emergency support, it's really useful and then it's 24 seven. Uh, speed up processes, HR analytics and predictive capabilities. If you want to analyze, okay, what kind of attrition rate I will have in my company in two, one, I don't know, one, two years, uh, based on this information that I give the system, this can easily uh, give you the information um, about the cons. Uh, still lack of data, uh, still uh, privacy and security concerns, lack of human touch, regulation, as I mentioned. Um, and sometimes I uh, read in the articles that um, uh, some of the uh, some of that mentioned that people become more lazy. OK, so when there is an example like then you go to Google, you have to analyze the information and then you have a picture. Uh, now ChatGPT just give you the, this picture. That's all you don't need to analyze, but it, not now. We still remember that you have to analyze what you see. You have to um, criticize what you see. Maybe in two, three years we will have it uh, up, more, more updated, but not now. Just quick overview of the companies that I liked. Uh, none of them were presented on a stream conference, but then I searched artificial intelligence in, in HR. I found this these companies and I think that's useful for you to go through the sites and understand maybe you can easily use it. Uh, ATS for recruiters, artificial intelligence in uh, recruiting hardware. Donut, it's application that connected with Slack, so you can easily put all the information in Donut and Donut will connect it with employees through the Slack, like I don't know, send some celebrates, uh, random coffee and so on. 
Uh, Vantage Circle is an employee engagement platform. It's Indian product. They work around the world and it's a really interesting one. Uh, then you will have this presentation with all the links. And uh, my expectations uh, for uh, next year, by the way, uh, just two days ago, I uh, think that I really want to go to Chicago and uh, see what's going on there next uh, next year. Uh, in this year, uh, the topics and the presenter were more like selling their products, but I hope the next year will be more business case and outcomes, like real outcomes, and we can understand how artificial intelligence has changed our life. Well, uh, your uh, your choice how to uh, how to react on artificial intelligence uh, or just put your head in the sand just scary just wait or uh, right away that's all that's all from my side Karina, thank you very much um no i i the, I can't say it was the first time I've heard about artificial intelligence, but like, like five, six years ago, it started, it's becoming more and more casual topic to discuss, even in the HR community. We are still have chatbots and to put the artificial intelligence inside it. And just, yeah, we can see that it's coming, coming more and more. And for sure, we can't avoid it. We need to go deeper in this topic. And for sure, routine stuff, very, it should be, I mean, just move to artificial intelligence. Again, my congratulations with achievement of shrimp certification. For sure, you have now more time. <laughs> you feel free <laughs> after four months of preparation, for example. And I can say that it's really not so easy. And the, I mean, just the average percentage to pass to pass an exam, it's just 60% all over the world. So. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's cool. And thank you again. And you know, you can find Karine all in LinkedIn. So just uh, become a friend, go and find her there. And thank you again. And you. let's go deeper in this topic and let's talk more about practical things. I mean, just uh, what exactly we can do right now. And I wanted to invite Evgen Belobrov, product owner of HR system Smart Business. Evgeny, please tell us uh, more. how we can, know. what should we do right now? What exactly should be our next step? Maybe not tonight, but for sure tomorrow. Please. Yeah, okay. I will try to share with you this information. And uh, this will be somehow or some kind of uh, not recommendation from my side, yeah, but some uh, things to uh, think about, yeah, and decide what exactly you can do right now, yeah. So uh, 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 great to, to hear you today, yeah. Thank you for having me today in, in this uh, uh, great event. So uh, my topic or my. Uh, presentation will be about practical, really practical things that are happening right now. So it's not something that will be in future, in one year, in two years. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, such information. So first of all, I have to say that actually uh, what uh, the things that we are seeing right now, uh, they are the results of the great work uh, made from uh, big vendors, of course, and made from uh, a lot of a lot of companies. Yeah, so Microsoft as a one of the uh, key players in this sphere. Yeah, starts to invest in this area in 2016 and maybe even earlier, and not just only in software, but also in uh, uh, hardware. Yeah, because uh, everything that we are seeing right now is produce product not just only of the software but also and uh, and hardware as well so supercomputers with highly uh, uh, computing uh, abilities yeah they are also the product of investment so Microsoft uh, have hugely invest in this area and 
uh, that's what we can see right now. Yes, it's also the part of this. But OK, what? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, interesting topics, but also we have to talk about the responsibility. So uh, what we have right now from the vendors, we have uh, like a documents that are sharing they are sharing with us the responsibility in this area because really that is not something that we previously had so it's not something that uh, had an algorithm yeah that we can even uh, see how the the system works so really the ai right now is using uh, neural networks that are working not the same but really uh, uh close to our brains yes yeah? so that's why it is not something that we can uh track yes yeah? so how system uh gets or provide these responses yes yeah? so it's not working uh, like that so it's computing every time every request uh in in, in its own way and it directly depends it, uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 information about that but it directly depends on the model and how does this model train so actually the results of the working of the model is also about the training so that's why uh, my, uh, microsoft and also uh, other vendors uh, sharing the uh, concept of uh, like a basic layer of this ai instruments yeah and this is about the responsibility yeah about the inclusiveness about the privacy and security reliability safe safety and fairness and transparency and accountability of course so that's mean that even right now if you would like to use this network in some maybe not uh, good ways or in some not correct uh, uh, request here yeah th this this uh, basic layer will work but it of course the responsibility of each vendor who is working on this tool so that's why it is very important topic and I think that yeah, in the future it will be something that will be regulated by the uh, governments and by the maybe uh, on the governments. Yeah, some uh, some organization that will be uh, manage this uh, resp responsibility of AI tools. Yeah, so but that is something that we do have on the basic layer. OK, but what exactly about how does it work right now yeah so yeah there are a lot of information about big products with the predictions with a calculation or recommendation model and so on and so forth this is uh yeah there is a part of these ai products yeah it is big pro project big uh, products with a lot of a lot of uh, data computing of this data and then providing you with the results but also right now we do have the bench of the instrument from the Microsoft as well that will be included in your daily product, such as Outlook, such as Teams, such as Word. So that's mean that it will be implemented, it will be integrated and it will help you to manage your daily works, uh, to write the letters, to write the documents, uh, to communicate with the colleagues and so on and so forth. So that is something that Microsoft have already presented in the co-pilot bench of the product and you will see it in. Uh, so they, they do have these demo versions of this product right now, so you, you can use this demo version and try it, but also it will be in a uh, public release in very, very short period of time. So that is will be something that you uh, you will use exactly and uh, where we can uh, increase our productivity yeah so where is the area of improvement here it is so right now you can see this is information from the microsoft open information about the distribution of the product uh, by the instruments by uh, 2023 so there are a lot of time people are spending in a teams meeting emails team chat excel and the words so yeah and they do have a lot of uh, uh, uninterrupted uh, so uh, not enough in uninterrupted focus time so that's mean that those instruments will help you to spend less time for chatting for creating emails for creating or drafting some word documents and uh, be more productive be more focused on the right things and the right tasks OK, but this is the words, but what we do have right now, but today, uh, these days, 
you're going to use something that is already working in the browser. So uh, from the Microsoft, we do have an Edge browser, and this Edge browser have integrated tool that is uh, actually the basis of this is also OpenAI product chat GPT, and you can see right now that it is integrated in the browser. It is absolutely free, and it helps you to work with the, uh, your search request, to draft some documents, to compose some elements, and uh, uh, even more. So I will also so, uh, show you how it works. And you can see that this panel is opened in, in the browser, so you can use it in your daily work as well. OK, let's go. What what do we what? How can we use this panel? How can we use this uh, chat GPT or uh, Edge browser Yeah, with this panel from chat GPT? Uh, how can we use it? Yeah, I have had some uh, Examples of the uh, prompts to the uh, in HR, HR sphere, of course. Yeah, for instance, create model of competencies for marketing specialists. Yeah, so let's imagine. So you do have this task here yeah, to create this model of competencies. You do want to have this draft here yeah, to to present it to to work it on it. OK, of course, so uh, this panel or this model can create you this uh, uh, model of competencies, the list of those competencies. Yeah, and you also can go further and ask, please provide me the list of the indicators for the competency inside for marketing specialist. Yeah, so uh, you can use this uh, request yeah, to create uh, uh, competency indicators, but you can go even further so you can ask, OK, I do have this list of the indicators, but how can I measure, for instance, number and quality of marketing research project? Yeah, how what will be the uh, measurement for this indicator? Uh, and you're welcome. You have an answer. Yeah, of course, you can work on it. You can uh, ask more detailed requests. You can ask to change something yeah, because you don't like something, but you have already got the response. You have already got the draft for this. Yeah, so actually it helps you to start with something. So if you have like a, a blank document, yeah, so right after the prompting, you will have the draft document. Yeah, it can, you can work on it. You can improve it. Yeah, you can add something else. OK, let's imagine we do have a task to describe the vacancy application. Yeah, so you also can ask, please provide me a good description for vacancy application, for instance, HR director. Yeah, so and uh, also you will get this uh, draft of this description. So uh, also this task could be done uh, with this instrument right now. Yeah, so you can use it. You can see it on my screen. So this example. OK, but what else uh, I can use in recruitment, for instance? I can use this prompt, but not chat. Yeah, like a prompting to the uh, to this uh, chat GPT, but the compose tab and I can uh, ask to compose uh, some uh, convince to accept my marketing specialist job offer. Yeah, you can see that I have selected enthusiastic manner of speech. I have selected the format as an email. And the length is a short. Yeah, and I have got the full text of this uh, email and I can use it again as a draft here to send to my candidate. So it, of course, improve you the, the speech, uh, the speed of the answer yeah you can use it as a draft you can uh, improve it and uh, right now to send it right after and as i mentioned yeah so in, in, a, in a few i think months you, you you can use it even in outlook inside but even now you can use the browser yeah and compose this email uh yeah for free absolutely yeah and go go and try it it is absolutely uh, interesting thing to try and to play with uh, OK, so if we, for instance, want to describe the learning course, yes, yeah? so uh, to describe the uh, some elements of the learning course as well, this is something that this uh, tool right now is doing great. Yes, yeah? so you can ask, describe me the course team management and you will get the description of the course. Yeah, for instance, you want to create uh, LMS element, yeah, like a learning course and you want to have description. Uh, you're welcome. You will get it. And also you can ask to create the program for this course. Yes, the number, the modules and then describe the modules and another tool that I want to uh, present uh, for you today is a graphical tool. Yes, so Microsoft have released in a uh, uh, 
demo version but it's absolutely available and it is absolutely for free uh for free for now yeah so you can use this tool and the name of this tool is designer microsoft designer you can uh you can google it yeah and you can create the images for your course yeah you have uh, for instance cover image you want to have for this course you can use it you can use some phrases you can use uh, some uh, some of your logos you can use the photo of the uh, uh Presenter, yes, yeah, so you can use it and compose very uh, attractive, uh, interesting images for that cover, cover images for the courses, and uh, and you can play with it. Yeah, actually, this slide shows uh, my. Uh, experiments here yeah, with this tool uh, on the HR uh, HR topic. Yeah, so you can see HR. Uh, visualization yeah, of the HR in different uh, themes. Yeah, so it uh, pop art, um, Van Gogh and uh, noir and Ukrainian style, Morocco ceramic style and uh, uh, cyberpunk style. Yeah, so the, the left one is cyberpunk. So you can see that it's it's it is interesting. Yeah, it generates uh, great images. You can use those images yeah, for your purposes. So uh, go and try it. It's very interesting and funny to work with it. And it is very interesting and funny as uh, as Karine mentioned yeah, to to try to improve these prompts. Yeah, to add some features, to add some elements, to ask to add something, to ask uh, uh, to ask to uh, uh, erase something from the picture yeah to ask to use exact colors exact poly palette exact uh, style as i as i asked yeah here so it is very interesting yeah and you have like uh, uh some prompts like, like a ready to use prompt so the system will helps you to uh what 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 it uh, actually uh you can use here yeah to 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 add some prompts so it is very interesting thing so uh i have provided you with some examples here yeah, let's summarize them so you can use it to uh, build a competency model to uh, build or get description for the indicators of the competitors and uh, uh, some uh, measurement of those competencies indicators you can get from this prompt. You can create description for the vacancies. You can create the letters for the communication with the candidates and you can create the description of the learning materials and of course images. Yeah, you can generate uh, your own personal images yeah, uh, from this tool. OK, now let's go to summarization of that. So uh, do we lose our job? I don't think so. Yeah, so you can see here the results of the survey. This is uh, like a open information from the Microsoft site. Results of the show uh, of the uh, survey show that. Uh, managers uh, and this is like a, the answers yeah, on this survey. So and the question was is uh, what you expect from the AI, yeah? And you can see here, I will uh, yeah, zo zoom in here. So they're expecting increasing of the productivity two times more than reducing a headcount, yeah? So right now it's not something that uh, managers expecting to uh, reduce headcount in the, uh, uh, in the uh, business units, yeah? They are expecting of the increasing of the productivity. So that's mean that uh, actually, uh, it shows that uh, actually I don't think that the trend will be to reduce in headcount. Of course, maybe from some some point of uh, view, from some of some some jobs. Of course, it could be it could be, but also uh, it it also will be the transformation. Yeah, and because uh, there will be some transformation, uh, we can uh, or we should also know what uh, to be ready for. Yeah, so what skills we need to improve. So actually also this is the, the results of this survey. And as you can see, 21% uh, is about AI delegation prompts. So the skill to write uh, not the correct prompts, yeah, but the prompts that will provide you with very uh, interesting, unique, answer from this tool, it will be the very uh, valuable skill. Of course, analytical judgment, of course, flexibility. Yeah, so you you have to be flexible because right now it is something new. And uh, of course, uh, the, the vendors are providing these tools already in those uh, software that you are using daily. So that's mean that uh, it is not something that will be uh, questioned 
to use or not to use. Yeah, so you can understand that those tools will be used by your competitors. So that means that we have to be ready to be flexible. We have to be ready to get new skills. Yeah, all, all of us, not just only some. Uh, so all of the all of the employees should be flexible and ready to use this uh, prompt yet yeah, to get this answer to to really improve uh, the uh, in, improve the productivity. So and of course bias detection and handling. So working with the data, working with these prompts, res uh, response from the from the machine is also will be a very valuable skill. So. Uh, I think that's all from my side. So uh, in case if we do have some questions, I am ready to answer them. OK, so. Evgeny, thank you very much. I I mean, just it's very practical ideas and I really um, wait right now that my team will start to use these tools and I will see new interesting pictures for sure created by a <laughs> and <laughs> i think they already started to use the gpt chat to write uh, this uh, i mean just some texts uh, especially announcement of the conference i think because i'm reading and say oh my god it's so good to, it's so well written <laughs> that was, yes 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 <laughs> it's true they use it but with pictures it's really interesting that we can do it and i i've seen amazing uh, work and what do you think what designers are going to do in in this case their skills will be in creating the prompts to combine the styles maybe yes so not just only to uh okay let me provide me the picture in this style no to combine the styles to use maybe the brand colors or maybe some main elements of the strategy of the company yet yeah, to ask in this way or in this style yeah or uh, for ai yeah for these pictures and also this will be something like a draft for them yeah so actually every work right now starts from the maybe from the scratch yeah or somebody is using some templates for the communication or templates for the uh, drawing some picture yeah some basic element they are using that the same uh, the same situation here so you can use it you can type your prompt get some draft, get some templates, use it, build your own better, more unique. Yeah, because it is also the question how unique it will be. And the, also the question who will be the uh, uh the uh like uh rights for this picture yeah so uh do do you need to pay somebody for like a, a, a royalty yeah, for that yeah because the uniqueness of this picture and the uniqueness of the text okay so if somebody will write the same uh prompts to the ai and for instance build the site based on the answers like a very ba basic prompts and the basic answers so they will be not unique sites so the google will not uh, also uh, index them and then show it in in the top uh, like a uh, top search results so yeah it is also the topic to think about to work with that and uh, actually yeah so that's why we have to start to use these prompts yeah that's why we have to start to understand the the limits of this tool yeah to understand uh how how it works how it looks like and who is also using the same yeah so it is it will be not so interesting to to read the same taxes maybe some in, in some days that will be the same taxes everywhere but it's not so <laughs> interesting to see yeah so but we have to understand this model and this model they are training a lot so your every prompt will train the model so more unique prompts more trained model and more human-like description human-like uh, communication and unique uh, results so it in in some days maybe it would provide you with unique result every time so it, it also could be the case but later on so right now yeah. i can say that uh, the average things or like templates or just to i mean just to start with for sure you can use it but after if you want to do it really good if you want some unique result it should be some personal touch and you should add some 
humanity to the results you get from the artificial intelligence from machines and everything yeah. yeah thank you thank you very much guys we still have couple of time i mean minutes uh, actually we have 20 of minutes but if we need them um i usually say if we're done we've done uh what how to if to summarize we can see that technology are coming more and more to our life and as HR specialists we get used that we are human oriented and we are not really very good in technology and it's necessary to pay attention to this area of expertise. Second point is numbers in any ways it's like we are talking we should to for us to be successful to be um, um, really strategic in our roles we should understand business we should understand economy we should understand the context where business is and uh, to to speak with numbers and hr analytics HR metrics, it's maybe uh, not the first step actually, but because it's complicated, it's necessary to collect the good data and after maybe, so the first step is to collecting the right and good and clear data and after to move further and to work with numbers. And despite of these very technical things in some point, we are becoming more and more human in our work. If to remember, I have to think about um, uh, our profession, how we moved from the legal part, from paperwork, from just um, organization, I mean, just organizing the schedule, organizing the process or the papers for person to start to work, now we paying much more attention to such things like well-being, like um, human part of the business. We are thinking about breastfeeding at the, in the office. We are thinking about pets insurance, and it's our and it's our business as well. So we are, and especially such uh, things like pandemia like war makes us more human and we can see how leadership are changing we understand that just to give an order and to be autocratic leader is it's not working anymore and just to pay people like the, the good money is not enough as well so let's let's work uh, we have a plenty of things to do we have a plenty of areas to develop ourselves uh, to become stronger to become more strategic and to get our seat at the table and influence people's life and business as much as it's needed actually and this is the topic Irina, we have one more question oh okay perfect great let me know this question can you tell me uh, yeah how can one benefit from pursuing a hrm certification how can one benefit from pursuing it should um actually i think it's really the same question as we get from the beginning and uh, james already said really uh the 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 main idea how it works for me i can say that uh, it's as you remember the numbers um there is a th 300 plus thousand members in shrim community more than 100 thousand people are certified all over the world and it really gives some standard for the profession, for amount of knowledge the HR professional should have, uh, should has. And it's really um, help, 
OK, we are many of us, I can say more than 10 years in the profession. Yes, we have a different uh, educational backgrounds. Um, I mean, some of us came from psychology. Some of um, us has from came from different different um, professions into HR sphere. And even despite, if you have really the good education, it's 10 years old education. And what I like in shrimp certification that they update uh, their knowledge, they update their materials, uh, they update platform uh, every year. And uh, so, and update amount of questions and they update the model, which is the base for the certification. So uh, if you get this certification, you understand that you are up to date. Your knowledge is really useful today and not something a really old one that you you are in the community in a strong community with 100,000 people around the world. And so you can speak with them using one language, understand each other and your decision based on best practice. So it's really help to be confident in, in when you talk with any stakeholders, if you talk with your man manager's uh, team and you really have this set of uh, knowledge and set of uh, competencies which helps you to be sure that what you are doing is really right. And maybe uh, some of my uh, guests can add something. Karine, what is your impression? What is your answer would be for this question? Uh, sorry for my background. I'm with a baby on the kitchen. <laughs> so yeah, my impression and um, then I was thinking about what will I share with my LinkedIn community tomorrow. I want to say that uh, I have a basic educational, like from a university, I have um, a degree of human resources and I have more than 15 years in business field. But still, uh, these four months gave me a lot of uh, structural information, a lot of um, information about um, HR behavior, competencies, uh, about the way of thinking and way of collaboration with other functions, business functions. So uh, that's why um, I think that this certification must, absolutely must for all the HR professionals, especially in Ukraine, because then you are working in the US, in the European Union and so in other uh, areas. Um, you will uh, face uh, different challenges for for example diversity and inclusion yeah it's more common there in our country it's less common but uh, still you have to understand the global uh, perspective you have to understand the global um, I don't know, uh, mainstream topics that is uh, all over the world. So um, it gave me structural information. It uh, gave me the uh, um, understanding that what I'm doing, I'm doing in the right way and that uh, all my recommendation to the business were right. So that's why I highly recommended this certification. Thank you very much. And you know, for me, you've said right now diversity inclusion. I can add uh, uh, such a topic like ethics. I can add the risk management. It's rarely the topic we are even talking about, but it's really important for your everyday decision making because we our decision should be made basic on ethics and last two years, three years shows us how it's impo how important to be really strong in uh, risk management, for example. And because we are dealing after all with all of these uh, results of such uh, things that which can happen in our life. And for sure, uh, the climate change, uh, the, all the political uh, instability, uh, financial instability, it will give us new challenges, I mean just tomorrow, and to be well prepared 
and we are becoming more global. I mean, all the businesses, we are the, the, the whole world becoming more global and the part, and again, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, for example, different cultures, how to mix people, how to manage people, and how to deal with all of that. It's really, really becoming a part of our um, plate. So it's really, really helpful. Thank you for question, and thank you, Karina, that you helped me with your way of view. And uh, what else? What, what the second point just to summarize i want to again uh, to step back and talk about the topic of people management um the culture built with your team of managers and if they are good if they are good in people management it's much easier for you to do your job we can't make all the things just by hr team we need to do it together with business and uh, challenges we face better to deal with the whole group. And how I, how to be certified, how to get certification? Now it's very easy. Actually, you, you are studying primarily at the platform. So um, you spend a lot of time online studying studying materials ask uh, at that platform more than one <clears throat> thousand questions which while you're answering the, them you're practicing and preparing for exam we provide three months now online course intensive course uh to prepare for exam it's again online it's uh, like one and a half hour per week during its 14 meetings so it's three months plus and you are in the group you working with instructor instructor help you to understand to to get this mindset i mean just to the idea how you should think how you should consider that cases, that questions, because it's not only theory, it's a lot of uh, cases. And after all, you can take an exam even from your home. So it's not necessary even to do to go to some special place where usually that kind of certified exams uh, are hold. So right now, since the COVID, you can do it from home. So it usually takes from three, four months till one year. And here it is. Just, just, it's just to, just to start. So send us the request, say, I want to do it. And for sure, my, the, our team will connect you and help you to understand how it's better to do it. And there is the evaluation tool, so you, you do a pre-test, you have post-test, so it's really, really good platform to be prepared for an exam. Karine, by the way, if you're still here and can answer the question, you said yeah. it was uh, three or four months. How much time during the day you spent or during the week or how it was in your case? Uh, like I started at uh, the end of March, um pass in july and uh, in march i spent like uh, minimum no okay now maybe not minimum but like average one hour a per day and uh, then i traveled a lot so i didn't uh, uh, teach <laughs> i didn't learn anything but uh, the last three weeks before the exam i spent like three four hours per day really i passed the uh, this trial exam i learned all the e-learning on e-learning platform i learned everything so uh, like it's uh, quite challenging and time consuming but believe me it's interesting really it's, believe me i can agree and from my perspective and from the so many students I already seen and on not only Ukrainians, but in from other countries as well. I can say that it's really. It's um, it shows your expertise. Believe me, if you pass this exam, I can be 100% sure 
that you know about HR and your decisions are really um, well, uh, really, really good. And it's it's really worth it, worth it, you know. So, and for sure it should help with the confidence. So you, you really know that you're doing the right things. Okay, guys, it's all, we are almost done. Thank you again for every speaker that for your time and for readiness to share to your expertise, your your ideas and what you've seen. I hope you get the feelings how really rich this event is and I can just invite you to join us it's motivated it's fulfill you with energy believe me when you are surrounded by 20,000 HR professionals people who really love their job people who are really eager to find some new tools and solutions people who are ready to develop invest their time for their personal and professional development these people who are ready to share their best practices and their ideas, it's really, really help you to make the next step and uh, I mean, just do something in a new way, something more complicated, something more excited. So, and it really helps you to feel that you are in the right place, in the right um profession and that you are really doing something important so find us in linkedin find us in facebook join us and plan your career development and your team development thank you for being with us today it was a pleasure of mine and thank you again join us Bye everybody and if you want to just add something in the chat like if you, if you like it just let us know. Thank you. And have a great evening. It's a summer time and I really appreciate that you find time to be with us today despite of the summer. <laughs> Thanks.